Hello, my name is Jamie Jewer. I am a master's student at McMaster University working under the supervision of Joseph McDermott and Joseph Kish. And today I will be giving a presentation on my project, The Effect of Hot Press Forming on the Electrochemical Properties of Galvanized Steel. The use of advanced high strength steels is becoming increasingly common in vehicles to improve both vehicle light weighting as well as passenger safety. And many of these automotive parts are formed by a process known as hot stamping or hot press forming, which is illustrated below. A steel blank is first austenitized in a furnace before being transferred to a die, which simultaneously forms and quenches the part to give the desired microstructure and part shape. It is possible to provide corrosion resistance to the part by galvanizing steel sheets prior to hot press forming, which provides cathodic corrosion protection. The austenization stage during the press forming process uh, creates a coating that is comprised of two iron zinc intermetallic phases, which are gamma Fe3 Zn10 and zinc ferrite. It was found in previous work that the amount of gamma present within the coating decreases with an increasing austenization time. And for robust cathodic protection to occur on the part, there must be at least 15 of volume percent of the gamma phase within the coating. The steel that I will be using for this project is a prototype 2% manganese steel based on the 22 MNB5 hot stamping grade whose composition is shown in comparison below. The addition of manganese to the steel was to allow for stamping at 6 to 700 degrees Celsius, which is below the paratectic reaction temperature, which avoids liquid metal embrittlement during hot stamping. Austenization of the samples occurred at a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius, and the time used were 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, and 180 seconds. It was found in a previous work that all of these austenization times resulted in the required 15 volume percent of gamma phase within the coating for robust cathodic protection, and the ultimate tensile strength was found to be greater than 1500 megapascals, particularly for the samples austenitized for 120 and 180 seconds. The samples were then stamped at a temperature of 700 degrees Celsius using water-cooled dyes seen on the right, which forms the final part that we see on the bottom right of this slide. During stamping, there are two main areas of concern when it comes to the ability of the coating to provide cathodic corrosion protection to the substrate. On the wall, there is significant friction as the punch slides against the coating, which creates a dye wiping effect and altering the surface morphology within these regions. The corners also undergo high friction, as well as high tensile strain, particularly in the outer corners, which are labeled in this diagram as regions two and seven, where micro cracks occur in the coating. Plain view SEM analysis of the part shown here for an austenization time of 30 seconds shows for the top we have a nodular morphology, but on the wall we see that this morphology appears to be smudged, thus indicating this dye wiping effect that I had previously mentioned. EDS elemental analysis for this area show that on the dye wipe parts, which appear here and here, there are small areas of iron enrichment, which is likely due to an increased amount of zinc ferrite on the surface of this part. Plan view SEM analysis for 180 seconds, the longest austenization time, shows at the top the same nodular morphology we found at the 30 second austenization, and at the wall, again, there is evidence of dye wiping along a significant portion of the part. Elemental EDS analysis of this region shows that on the dye wiped areas, there is an increase in the amount of zinc ferrite here noted by the increased amount of iron shown in the elemental maps. And correspondingly, there is a decreased amount of gamma on the surface of the coating in this part. 
This negatively impacts the ability of the coating to provide robust cathodic protection to the steel as the driving force for cathodic protection for the gamma phase is much greater than that of the zinc ferrite. To confirm these results, electrochemical experiments were carried out using an aerated solution of 100 grams zinc sulfate heptidrate, 200 grams sodium chloride, and 1,000 milliliters of deionized water. The experiments carried out were potentiodynamic polarization scans for the purpose of determining the E-core or corrosion potential, which is the driving force for cathodic protection. Galvanostatic polarizations were also carried out with a current density of 10 milliamps per centimeter squared for the purpose of determining the relative longevity of the phases within the coating. Baseline testing shows potentiodynamic polarization scans carried out from negative 0.9 volts to 0.4 volts for the steel, the zinc ferrite, and a sample of pure gamma phase. And the peaks in each of these curves indicate the corrosion potential, here showing the corrosion potential of the bare steel to be negative 0.637 volts, that of the zinc ferrite to be negative 0.706 volts, and that of the gamma phase to be negative 0.864 volts. And we see here that there is a much larger driving force for cathodic protection between the gamma phase and the bare steel than the zinc ferrite and the bare steel, further reinforcing why it is necessary to have a minimum 15 volume percent of gamma within the coating structure to provide robust cathodic protection. Potentiodynamic polarization scans, which were carried out here um, and shown for our lowest austenization time of 30 seconds, indicates that all regions have the same corrosion potential, thus showing that along the entire part, there is the same driving force for cathodic protection. And this also occurs for the samples austenitized at 60 seconds and 120 seconds. After 180 seconds of austenization, however, we see that there is a slight increase in the corrosion potential for the uh, areas that we have determined are of concern, which are the wall and the corner of the part. In galvanostatic polarizations, the sample is held in solution at a constant current density of 10 milliamps per centimeter square and the potential is measured over time. This gives us a three plateau structure we see here, where the first plateau indicates the dissolution of the gamma phase, the second plateau indicates the dissolution of zinc ferrite, and the final plateau indicates the dissolution of the bare steel, at which time it is assumed that the coating is no longer providing robust cathodic protection to the substrate. We see here after austenization at 30 seconds that the complete dissolution of the gamma phase, the end of the first plateau, occurs sooner at the corner followed by the wall, indicating that this phase does not last quite as long um, in these regions. And this effect can be seen for austenization times of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 120 seconds. After 180 seconds of austenization, uh, we see that this plateau indicating the dissolution of the gamma phase is much shorter, which is attributed to the fact that after the longer austenization time, there is less of this phase within the coating. And additionally, this phase was not detected at all for the top and wall of the part, which is evident that robust cathodic corrosion protection does not occur within these regions after 180 seconds of austenization. A cyclic corrosion test, SAE J2334, was carried out to determine the corrosion performance of the coating. An air atomized fog method was used, which consisted of a humid stage for six hours at 50 degrees Celsius with 100% humidity, a salt application stage for 15 minutes at 25 degrees Celsius, with a solution of 0.5 weight percent sodium chloride, 0.1 weight percent calcium chloride, and 0.075 weight percent sodium bicarbonate. 
and then there was a dry stage for 17 hours and 45 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. This led to a 24-hour cycle that was repeated daily for six weeks, with samples being removed at weekly intervals during the dry stage. Mass gain analysis shows two regions of linear mass gain, from weeks 1 to 4 and weeks 5 to 6. This large increase in mass gain between weeks 4 and 5 is due to the complete dissolution of the coating, at which point for week 5 and 6, the coating is no longer able to provide corrosion protection to the steel substrate. This mass gain is attributed to the increasing amount of corrosion product that is present on the surface of the samples with longer exposure time within the salt spray. It is also greater mass gain for samples with a longer austenization time, indicating that for these samples, there was an even greater buildup of corrosion product on the surface. Mass loss was measured by dipping samples in a solution of 85 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and 1,000 milliliters of deionized water in 15 second intervals. It was found that after the removal of corrosion products, there was an increased mass loss due to the dissolution of the coating and the substrate with a longer exposure time. There was also a greater mass loss uh, measured for an increased austenization time after uh, six weeks of exposure, indicating a greater loss of the coating and substrate on these samples. Cross-sectional microstructural analysis shown here for an austenization time of 30 seconds at the top of the part, indicate that after one week of exposure, there is already significant damage to the coating, which continues at three weeks where we see corrosion products start to build up on the surface. And after six weeks of exposure, there's complete dissolution of the coating, as well as significant substrate attacked, which relates to what we have seen in the mass gain experiment, uh, where there's significant corrosion product buildup on the surface of the sample, as well as the mass loss experiment, where there is a significant uh, loss of both the coating and the substrate. After, on the wall of the part, after one week of exposure, we see again significant dissolution, this time particularly to the gamma phase within the coating. Uh, which continues at three weeks, and after six weeks, we see again complete dissolution of the coating, as well as significant substrate attack, which relates to what we have seen in the mass loss experiments. And at the corner of the part, after one week, there is significant dissolution of the gamma phase, um, and particularly areas where corrosion products infiltrate into the cracks. These cracks are likely attributed to being the micro cracks that are formed during the press forming process and not due to corrosion itself. But we see here the throwing power of cathodic protection is still able to protect the substrate even though the cracks reach down to the surface. At three weeks, we still see that these cracks are present within the coating but do not affect the substrate and the substrate has not corroded. But after six weeks, with complete coating dissolution, we see again that there is significant substrate attack. In conclusion, there was evidence of dye wiping on the part wall where there was removal of the gamma phase and increased zinc ferrite in these areas when compared to the bulk of the coating. It was found in the potential dynamic polarization scans that for lower austenization times, all areas provide the same driving force for cathodic protection. But in the galvanostatic scans, it was found that the d complete dissolution of the gamma phase occurs sooner at areas which are significantly affected by the dye, such as the corner and the wall. And gamma was not detected in this galvanostatic scan at the 180 seconds austenization for the top and wall of the part which suggests that there is not enough of this phase present within that coating to provide robust cathodic protection. Salt spray experiments show the complete dissolution of the coating after five weeks of exposure in the chamber, as well as greater loss of coating and substrate on samples with a longer austenization time. For future work, I will be doing further investigation into the effect of dye wiping 
particularly in these areas of increased zinc ferrite and removal of the gamma phase. I will also be determining the effect of stamping temperature by repeating electrochemical experiments for samples stamped at 600 and 650 degrees Celsius. And I will be completing XRD analysis on corrosion products and coating phase ratio evolution, which was done during the salt spray test. I would like to acknowledge my supervisors, Joe McDermott and Joey Kish, Beth McNally, Mike Bruhess, and the CAMPSI Research Group, uh, the Canadian Centre for Electron Microscopy for SEM support, as well as NSERC and these institutions for funding my research. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation, and if you have any questions on my work, please do not hesitate to reach out.